Hello everyone, how y'all doing? Welcome to another video log. Uh, today I'm going to talk about organizing online events. Um, I organized a few throughout many years, decades even, and um, the last one that I organized in Nersia Demo Party went rather uh, smoothly uh, compared to a lot of other uh, demo scene online events that have been happening on 2020. And uh, some people suggested that I should do a video um, going through the basics, some sort of mini seminar slash workshop on how to, what are the things you need to keep in mind when you are organizing this kind of event to make sure that it goes well. Um, of course, this is not like the go to all, each party is different or each event is different. And uh, you need to adapt to your own characteristics in at inertia. Uh, in particular, I was pretty much left alone doing uh, most of the stuff. I had a couple of people helping me, but it was very uh, sporadic, small things. Most of the heavy work was myself, so I had to plan the whole thing and make sure everything was being executed. So, okay, let's get on with it. Um, about organizing online events, the first thing you need to do is plan. Plan ahead, uh, minimum one month in advance. You need to know what you are doing, when you are doing, and who is doing what. Uh, that is crucial to, to make sure uh, you get everything. Uh, you need a logo, you need uh, a graphical identity uh, to use on, uh, on your communication. Uh, you need a website to direct people where they can read information about the event itself. Uh, you need to spam it on all the social media that you have, and then some. Uh, you need to announce it very early, and you need you need to announce it often, uh, recurringly, uh, throughout the time as, as it goes forward. I recommend three months before, one month before, and then one week before. But you can also, you know, every week do a little announcement. Some people do, like, some, some campaigns where they start posting recurring things and uh, spamming all of that on all the social network and everything leads back to the event that they are organizing. So that also works. And uh, above all, you should invite people directly. Don't just expect that you will post a flyer online and people will just flock to your event. You need to actually contact the people that usually show up to these events and tell them, hey, I'm organizing this thing. I think it's up your alley. Won't you want to do this for this compo? Don't you want to do that for that compo? From Inertia, like over half of the entries that we got were people who I had approached directly. So if I hadn't done that, I would have had a lot less uh, entries submitted. And then it usually snowballs by word of mouth, or you know, doesn't, but uh, you should um, still have fun regardless of the number of people who end up participating in the end. You need to have a realistic uh, schedule that is something that can be actually accomplished by the organization team not go uh, beyond the the skills the technical skills the 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 time constraints and that kind of stuff so you need to know who you can rely on for what tasks and you need to plan accordingly to that uh, keep your schedule up to date updated as uh, often as possible uh, then you need to make sure you have a submission system for your entries that is uh, flawless to, to use, a voting system, a beam system, and you need to figure out your equipment by testing dummy compos on it early on. Uh, about submission systems and voting systems for demo scene stuff, there are two that are largely used. One is the Party Meister, and the other one is Woohoo. I've been mostly using Woohoo on the, on the, at Inertia. Uh, it's a lot more lightweight uh, than Party Meister. Um, both of them are okay. Both of them can you, you can get stuff done, but I think Woohoo is a lot easier to get into and not spend so much time mastering all the little quirks that will eventually catch up on you. Uh, so I would recommend Woohoo if you're doing a new online event of the demo scene nature. Uh, there are others out there, but these are the two main ones that I can think of right now. Um, what other stuff? Let me see here. My notes. Uh, figure out your equipment by testing dummy compos early on. Like, pretend you already have two, three musics for a music compo. Test the music compo. Is everything playing okay? Uh, was the experience of presenting the whole thing okay? Uh, do you have enough screens? Think about all of that and then do that for all the compos that you have already. Uh, 
usually it's graphics compos, music compos, they are different, and uh, demo compos, which are also a different experience. You have to either run the stuff on a machine and have a way to capture that, or uh, get everything on video and show the video, and that's also a different way of presenting the stuff. Um, testing these things will allow you to uh, figure out uh, the redundancies or plan B's that you will need. Like while you're doing these test things, uh, ask yourself what would happen if my sound system would stop working? What would happen if I would no longer have one monitor? What would happen if my machine would crash right now? So think of all the things there are like the worst possible case scenario. And then after having that list of worst possible case scenario, you need plan B's for all of them or redundancies. In case of a failing machine, you can get, you know, if I have a laptop, I could maybe use the laptop. If you have the sound system, if the sound system fails, I have another sound card that I can use, you know, things like that. Monitors, do you have any extra monitors lying around? Uh, would there be someone else who could pick up the, the stream and host it instead? Uh, if you have like a DJ set, do you have any alternatives? If the DJ isn't able to stream live, do you have any backups like a mix already done or something or another DJ waiting for you to tell him to, to please step up? All of these things you need to try to figure out and have uh, redundancies or plan Bs for make a list if you if you can't remember all these things. Um, most of, mostly you won't have any problems with any of these things, but it's good to have a mental image on your head of what you would resort to if you had those problems. So if that happened on the day, you won't be stressed out like a headless chicken running around in circles. You will be actually remember, oh, okay, this is what I would previously do. Does it make sense to make it now? Let's just, you know, what happened has happened, let's figure out the solution, and this is the first uh, idea that I have to, because I already thought about this problem. Uh, not just machines, but also, you know, cables, uh, internet connection, very important for online events. Uh, what other uh, demo shows, if someone is doing a demo show, if someone is doing a seminar, make sure that they record their stuff before. They might be uh, waiting for the last minute and then wanting to do it live. There will always be problems like that. And <clears throat> about doing things live, if you're going to have any guest on, prepare a time to do a mic check. It's important for them to test their webcam, test their uh, microphone, test all the levels, that they can hear you properly, that you can hear them properly, and that the levels are balanced properly and no one hears any echoes of anything being weird. So always uh, check that uh, if you plan to have someone on. It's easy to just put a Jitsi meeting on, but there will always be one idiot who forgets to plug in their headphones and is banging his keyboard or something like that. And you need to be able to first have talked with him previously, him or her, and explain what he should do, what he should not do. Muting yourself when you're not speaking is one of the key things, but some people forget to unmute themselves, for example. But checking all the levels and the stuff, and maybe he has the wrong microphone in, and if you do the mic check, then you will have things prepared properly. So always try to find a slot of time to do mic checks with, with people who you will have on. Uh, let me see my notes, what other stuff... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, streamline and delegate your event day. So anything that you will need to do during the day, like... Uh, uh, who will take care of answering random questions from people? Who will who will be giving away vote keys? Uh, who will be directing people to the voting system? Uh, who will be handling last-minute submission changes? Because if you are hosting, you are not being able to type on uh, Discord or IRC or whatever it is that you're using to communicate with other people when they're asking you questions. You won't be able to read your email. So either you have some slot of time allocated to go through that and make it inbox zero again and then uh, carry on with uh, with the show uh, like i don't know you have a dj set in the middle okay you can use the dj set time to catch up on all the stuff that you need to catch up with and uh, answer the weird questions that people have because they didn't check the fucking website um it's better if you have uh, delegated people who will inform that like a lot of people sometimes in the chat people will ask questions that other people already ask and they will just answer so it's nice to have a few people who you trust well to uh, 
play that role, at least help them, hint them. If you see that it's not being, uh, it's not taking place, hint them to please help the other people about that. And usually people will just do that. But things that are internal to the organization need to establish that things before. So if you have, if you want to prepare a compo in time, you need to make sure that uh, whoever is responsible for the compo is accompanying it. And like whenever there's a new entry, he will check or he or she will check if uh, it's it contains all the things that were required, what is missing, inform the person of whatever is missing that the thing is missing, things like that. Um, you need someone to take care of that while you are paying attention to the other stuff. Um, ba -bum -ba 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 -bum. Let me see whatever is missing. Giving away what keys, last minute submission changes. We talked about it. Who will be handling the social media announcement hype during the event to bring in more viewers? So, this is also important. Uh, you need to keep uh, talking in Twitter and Discord and that kind of stuff, keeping people up to date. I mean, if the event is just two hours, maybe you don't. But if it's like four hours, eight hours, or multiple days, you need to have some sort of regular uh, presence there. And it's usually better if it's not the same person who is hosting the stuff because you won't have time to look at social media and hype stuff. Like announcing this compo is coming in the next 15 minutes, stuff like that, retweeting what other people are doing, maybe create a hashtag, something like that, and make sure that you follow it and... Uh, I'm talking about Twitter in particular, but you can do it also on Facebook with the Facebook group and get more people active or IRC channel or Discord, whatever. It's uh, if, if the event is not that small, like one hour or two hours, I think it's fine. You just do an initial uh, announcement. Uh, maybe ask other people who are also participating to retweet, re-announce, whatever, to help you do that uh, announcement phase. And then you just focus on the event itself because it's one, two hours. Either people arrive immediately or they will just catch the end. If it's more than that, then you need to have a certain cadence of recurringly reminding people that you are doing something and people should come and check it out. <clears throat> um, what else? Uh, Pre-record everything that you can. Um especially with demos for weird platforms like uh, you don't have a spectrum you want it to be pre-recorded so you can make it very clear that people should be delivering already the video of it uh, make sure people know when they are delivering and how they should be delivering so you should be delivered one day before and include a video link for it uh, like tell them immediately that they should have the video link on we transfer or put it on uh, Google Drive or something like that, a place where you can download uh, the link or set up an FTP and people can upload there. Uh, make sure that it's clear when they are submitting the entry that they know what they should be delivering and when they should be delivering. So uh, you don't end up, you know, checking the compo last minute and then, oh, I needed a video, but I don't have a video. And now you're asking someone to do a video while you are announcing what's coming up next. You don't have time for that or you won't have time for that. Uh, also pre-record as much stuff as you can from the all the other events that you have, um, seminars, demo shows, that kind of stuff. Uh, the more pre-recorded stuff, the better. The less fall, uh, the less uh, propensity for error for live errors, and the more buffer time you will have. Buffer time is also something important. Make sure you always have like uh, 10, 15 minutes buffer time between the different sections of your stream. If there is no problem whatsoever, great. Just put up an announcement uh, that you will be resuming things shortly. If you are not busy doing something else, you can even put some uh, demos playing while you're waiting. Just make sure you announce properly that we are just killing time until the next uh, hour shows up. Uh, rather have too much buffer time than have too little buffer time. Don't exaggerate. Buffer time is usually like 20%. Of the overall thing if you do like a uh, hundred percent of buffer time you will have a lot of time to kill and you you also don't want that uh make sure people know when they will be delivering what they should be we already said that uh yeah whenever you are talking with someone about the compo re-mention how they should uh, deliver stuff because uh you ask someone to deliver, like, I don't know, a Nashi entry. You try to complain, you try to poke them about delivering something. And you say, oh, you should uh, deliver it to my compo. 
If you don't say how or when, they won't know. So you should say it. And even when they are replying to you with a question of other sort, re-mention again that they should be delivering it at this place, at this hour, blah, 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 blah. Like, don't be patronizing, obviously, but uh, keep it fresh in their heads so they won't have to search a lot to find that info. And also they are reminded of what's coming up and when it's important that they uh, match those expectations. Uh, people will fuck it up anyways, but, you know, at least you did the, the possible thing that you could do to remember, remind them accordingly. Um, so schedule, scheduling is very important. A schedule is not just for when things will be presented. You need to have a schedule of when you will be doing stuff as well. If you don't have any time for you to sleep or any time for you to eat, you won't be able to deliver anything. If you don't have time reserved for you to be focused 100% on checking all the competition entries, making sure they are okay and labels 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, um, the names are clear, the, the content is clear, the content is playing, it doesn't crash, uh, don't need to contact the authors in any shape or form. If you don't have time to do that, uh, things will go wrong. Uh, and then you will have to deal with that live, which will just make things even worse. Um, you need So you need to have times allocated for you or other organizers to be doing specific things. So compo checking needs to be done, you know, two hours, three hours before the compo goes live, something like that. Um, in my experience, you should check compo entries immediately as you close the submission. And let me tell you why. Uh, people will always try to do late-minute submissions. That's fine. Um, but if you have everything else already prepared, then adding one extra submission is no big deal. If you don't have anything prepared at all, then it will be a lot more work. And if you need to contact someone about something in specific you will need to give them time to ans to read it and answer you back. So you need the bigger buffer, the better. So uh, make sure that you have enough time to prepare all the releases and have it shown, but also enough time for someone to reply to it, especially if it's online and someone might be on the other side of the world sleeping at the time, like they submit something and they go to bed. They won't reply you until the next day, so think about that and have at least 24 hours should be enough for, for people to respond time if they have actual interest in their entry being played properly. Um, so yeah, locate time for checking all compo entries properly. I already mentioned this. Test run all the different compos. I can't stress this enough. Uh, test the whole procedure for the graphics compo. Don't just think, ah, I'll just show the image here. No, do it actually physically, like physically change all the things that you need to change to be on the stream uh, try to record the session if you don't want to live stream and see see it back or play it back and see where you failed what went wrong why it went wrong and try to fix that optimize that to make it as smooth as possible not just for the people viewing but for you organizing as well like if you're clicking 500 times for every single entry the chances that you'll make a mistake will be a lot bigger than if you only have to do three clicks. So think about that and try to optimize your screen space to have everything available immediately and you don't have to alt-tab between windows and stuff like that. And uh, and yeah, and try to think about those those issues. Uh, test And testing them, doing a test run is the best. And it's different for graphics, for music, and for demos themselves. So test all of the three different ones. And if you're doing like Ashi and Ansi stuff, you also need a special um, test case for that because the viewers are different. Uh, simplify all switching tasks that you can simplify. Uh, print submission notes if you can. Woohoo has a nice feature for that, which I didn't know for Inertia, and it was a pain. And it, I, I had to keep going back and forth between... Uh, the information on the actual thing and the list of the old entries so I know which entry is coming next and then switching back to OBS and load the next slide and then go. Uh, it would be a lot easier if I had like a printout of all the notes for all the entries right next to me and I would just, oh, entry number something. Oh, it's something, something, something by this guy. And he says blah, 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 blah. Uh, a lot better than clicking around to check that info if there even is no info because most of the entries didn't have one but i had to double check in case they did 
so yeah, if sometimes you're watching a compo and the organizers don't say the thing that you submitted on the on the organizer notes or on the public notes, don't be surprised because a lot of people while they're presenting the stuff don't have time to check that so either they checked it previously during the compo and remember it or they probably will fuck it up <coughs> um, other hints to streamline the process you should, should try to get something like this a stream deck i already talked about it before on the stream it helps a lot to switch things around uh, especially on obs itself which is the, the streaming recording software that i use to to output stuff uh, but it, it can be a sign to do other stuff as well, triggering other things like opening specific websites, things like that, restarting things, uh, control voice meter, for example, if you want to do the audio mixer. Um, and talking about audio mixers, it's, impossible, it's important that you figure out your setup early on, like what will you be doing on software, what you'll be doing on hardware in terms of both audio and video and make sure that you have uh, redundancies for, for both of them, like if... If you're doing software audio and your software uh, and your computer crashes and you don't no longer have the software audio schemes all set up, how do you solve that? Uh, same thing for hardware. If you're using a mixing desk and your mixing desk will fail during the stream, how will you? Uh, what is the alternative to that? So think about that. Um, <clears throat> prepare OBS as best as you can, make it clear, easy to transition, uh, have hotkeys to change stuff if you if, if that makes sense. Um, more extra monitors, the better. Um, I have four and I still feel like it's too little sometimes. And then just remember to have fun when you're on the stream because no one likes to see someone uh, mumbling and uh, looking like they're about to have a heart attack or uh, just complaining that uh, things are going wrong. So uh, have fun, think positive. Uh, a trick that I learned at some point before recording videos is that you should laugh. I don't think you should laugh on the stream at the people watching, but you know, uh, do it off camera. Before you start speaking, smile, think a happy thought. And then you will be a lot more cheerful delivering your message, which will be a lot more positive. It will be a positive vibe for them. It will be a positive vibe for you. Win, win, win. So I, I try to adopt that, and I think it, it actually does work. So it's it's not just a gimmick. Uh, be concise with what you need to say. Don't ramble on and on. Uh, be concise and be loud enough. Make sure your levels are being heard. Ask on the stream if they are being heard. If no one is replying to you when you say, are you hearing me properly? Then you, you're probably not being heard properly. Um, and don't assume uh, whatever you say on the stream will be heard and remembered. So uh, whatever you announce, make sure that it's either shown on screen uh, like uh, listed, if it's critical, of course, uh, shown on screen, either on, uh, I don't know, a banner, a slide, anything like that, or updated schedule, uh, make sure that it's repeated on screen or on the chat, like that it is repeated. It's not just you said it once and expect everyone to remember it in, in 10 minutes. Uh, most people will have missed it and then it will just be confusion. You will need to repeat it again. So whatever you are communicating that is of importance, make sure that it's visible and stays on screen. A lot of people sometimes use a slide to um, <coughs> update what's happening next. And that's, that's a good tactic as well. And you also don't have to face the camera if you're camera shy. Just put the slide saying the thing and then you update. You can even uh, do something and update text manually while you are doing uh, the, the stream. So that also works. Anyways, long video is long. Uh, those are pretty much all the pro tips that I had uh, to give you. If you have any specific questions or anything like that, feel free to post uh, below and I'll be happy to give whatever insight uh, I can give. I'm I'm still an amateur streaming. I learned the stuff from doing a lot of mystery demos in Theater 9000, but um, you know I'm not a pro uh, gamer streamer, and I'm not a pro um, event organizer with a lot of hardware and that kind of stuff. I try to keep it simple, and it's been working for me. So that's what I suggest to people. But there are a lot of alternatives which would also be. Uh, worthy of discussion and if you want any references I can you know give you whatever 
knowledge that I have. I'm, I'm glad to share whatever you all, you are interested in hearing about. Um, so yeah, see you next video. Bye bye everyone. Take care.